Well, I managed to finish recording another video only to have my browser freeze up and I was unable to save it. So, starting over. Um, but I would like to change the topic from what I was going to talk about in this video. I'd like to speak about why people don't vote. Um, I have actually surveyed people on this. I no longer have the results of these surveys but you know I just wanted to say this is not entirely conjecture um, but nor nor can I say that it is necessarily a hundred percent accurate because the surveys that I did um, obviously you know covered a limited number of people and uh, you know I, I can only speak from from what I personally um, believe to be true based on, on what I've learned I I know there are a lot of people who think that the reason, the big reason why most people don't vote in this country, you know, the United States does have an awful lot of people who don't vote. Uh, a lot of people think the reason is because they don't care. <clears throat> now I mentioned that in an earlier video and I wanted to elaborate on that a little because um, in, in my talking with people about why they choose not to vote, um, I found that not caring was extremely uncommon. Those people who said that it was because they didn't care, which which was a rare thing to start with, when asked for clarification, uh, what they would generally say is that what they meant by that they didn't care is that that um, they didn't care about the actual process of voting because it didn't seem to actually have any effect on the outcome of the election, and they they in fact cared very much about who's in charge, who's running things, who's making decisions that affect their lives. But they felt that they had no way to do anything about that. And casting their one vote didn't seem to be making any difference. Now, some people buy lottery tickets thinking they're going to get rich. And, you know, some people every single day they buy another lottery ticket thinking, you know, that's going to be the one that makes them rich. Um, and once in a while, somebody does get rich off of it but the vast majority of people who are doing that every day are just spending money so there are a lot of different ways of looking at the world there are a lot of different ways of perceiving the things around us and a lot of different um, ideas and expectations but I will say this much about the electoral system that the people who have come to the conclusion that their vote is basically meaningless are right and I don't mean that we shouldn't vote. We need to change this. We need to do something about the fact that our votes are basically meaningless. There's a reason behind it. There's a flaw in our electoral system that allows people to take advantage of the fact that we can't vote directly against someone by paying for slam and slander ads that, that cut down one politician so that people vote for another politician. Now, some people say, well, that's the way it is, therefore, that's the way it should be. Well, if somebody was doing something really bad to this person and this person was not liking it, chances are they would not be saying, well, this is the way it is, therefore, this is the way it should be. But something bad is happening to our society when people have to decide between not voting and voting in a way that they feel is going to do more harm than good. And this is what happens when people cast what I refer to as, and this is not, I didn't coin the, the phrase, the, the lesser evil vote. Um, lots of people vote for what they see as the lesser of two evils. And I would like to point out from at least a strictly linguistic point of view, if you consider something to be a lesser evil, that's not the same thing as considering it to be good. That's still considering it evil. If you think something is bad, why would you cast a vote to have it represent you in government and make decisions for you that affect your life? A lot of people do it. And I can tell you the reason why they do it according to what they've told me. And the reason is because they would rather have the lesser evil than the greater evil. I understand that. But the problem is, it doesn't work that way. The liberals highly outnumber the conservatives. 
and the conservatives relentlessly vote to try to get their conservative candidates in in order to keep out the liberals because the liberal candidates tend to scare them. The, 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 the liberals, on the other hand, tend to look at the two options and go, well, I don't like that one and I really, really don't like that one. So it's better that I don't vote because I don't see anybody who can win that I actually want in. So what I would ask that those liberals do that choose not to vote and any conservatives who choose not to vote, what I would like to ask them to do is to try really hard to find a candidate for each position that you have time to look into that you can stand behind. And if you can manage to find a candidate that you can support, tell other people about it. Pass the word around. Don't wait for for people with big money to pass the word around about there being a candidate out there that seems to be worth supporting. And when it comes time to vote, vote for that candidate. And on any positions where you did not find a candidate that you really can stand behind, write in the word occupy until we have an electoral reform that will allow you to vote against someone directly and say, I want to keep this person out. I want to subtract one from this person's net vote total. I want to defy this person getting into this particular position and say, no, I don't want it to happen. You know, we should be able to say things like that on the ballot. When it comes to voting on a referendum or something like that, we're always allowed to, to say yes or no. We're not always allowed to say, yes, I'm strongly for it, or yeah, I'd tolerate it, or no, I don't really don't or really quite want it, or I absolutely want to keep this thing out. Um, that would be nice, but we're not always allowed such options. We are allowed on other types of voting, um, yes or no. Now, elections are a little different because if, if, you, if you vote for or against a referendum, if you vote against it, you don't necessarily get something else in its place. Maybe something something else will come along and you'll get to vote on that too. But, you know, it's, it's not like you necessarily get some other thing because you voted against it. In the case of our elections, what we're getting right now is, is if you, well, really, <laughs> If, if you try to keep something out, you will necessarily get something else, something else because the position's going to be filled. But there are other people voting as well. And if other people have some idea of a candidate that's really good, why should we vote for a lesser evil and keep those other people from possibly putting in a candidate that they have done the work, done the studying on, and have decided they honestly believe this candidate will do good rather than harm? Now, to me, my way of thinking, I don't see any reason why we should vote for a lesser evil ever. Unless the only choices we possibly can have are the two choices. Right now, that's not true. That's not the case. We, we don't have only two possible choices. We only have two realistic choices. And the only reason that only two choices are realistic is because of the fact that people do this lesser evil voting. So I'm encouraging people to get the word around, to talk about this with other people, to tell other people that, that we need to stop the lesser evil voting as much of it as possible. We won't get rid of 100%, but we may bring the amount of it down to the point where voting for a candidate that you really think can do some good will make a difference. And maybe even allow a candidate to win who hasn't taken the money from people who are saying, you know, look, you, you, you change the laws in my favor against everybody else. And, and I'll, you know, um, see to it that, that, you know, you get lots of financing on your next campaign. And if you don't do what I want, you know, you're going to have slam and slander ads next time. And, you know, I mean, politicians in office right now worry about these kinds of things. You never know if, if you vote against something, if, if somebody if suddenly there's going to be an ad showing up in your area, um, you know, telling what a rotten person you are. And, you know, they have lives. They're, they're people. They care about these things. 
And unfortunately, it seems, for the most part, they care about that more than they care about doing their job right. So that puts us in a lot of trouble. Now, I'm not saying that they all have that problem, but it seems to be something evident as a, a bit of a trend. So we want to fix it. We have to give them a way out. We have to, we have to balance things so that the people can just as well be able to say, look, um, you know, I can give you a benefit if you do things the people's way and I can, you know, um, do something that you're not going to like, which is vote directly against you if you do things directly against the people. If, if a congressman or a senator can cast a vote that goes directly against the, the goes dire directly against what's good for the people, why should the people not be able to vote directly against a senator or a congressman? Or for that matter, uh, a candidate for president, or for mayor, or city council member, or sheriff, or, or whatever the case might be. Some some people, when they run an election, they run completely uncontested. There's no other person running against them. So right and vote is the only thing that might possibly win against them. And how do you get people to consolidate on a single right and vote if they really want to keep this person out? If, if people don't have somebody else that they'd prefer to have in, this person is, you know, they're basically guaranteed to win, no matter how bad people think they are. And again, this is part of where the Occupy vote comes in. The idea of writing an Occupy is to say, I was there and I do care. It's, it's telling the government and telling the rest of the country and telling the world that yes, we can show up at elections, we can have a good voter turnout. The problem is not the fact that we don't care. The problem is the fact that we don't have good options and we need to have good options. So if you want electoral reform, if you want to see some good options on the ballot, if you want to see possibly the, the, um, the right to say on a ballot, for example, I am against the Republican Party, and I'm absolutely against the Democratic Party, and I'm strongly for the Libertarian Party, and I'm slightly for the Green Party. Or as another example, if you want to say, um, I am against the Democratic Party, and I'm 100% absolutely against the Re Republican Party, and I'm um, strongly for the Green Party, and I, I, you know, I like this um, Libertarian Party candidate a little bit, and there's there's this independent candidate that I absolutely would love to have in, even though I don't think he can win, you know, and say all of that on the same ballot. If you want that that kind of improvement, that kind of options, if if you would like to have elections that really represent the way you think then in all future elections, until we have that, please write in Occupy on every single position you can, except for those positions where you actually support someone. If you have a, if you have a, a, a good candidate to put in, by all means, try to get that candidate in. If you've got to write their, if you've got to write them in, do the best you can to spell their name right so it gets counted right. By the way, Occupy, um, spell the two C's, O C C U P Y. Uh, I know there are a few people out there that aren't too sure of that. So yeah, just just so it's been said. Write in the word occupy. It's not a candidate. It's not a party. It's not supporting anyone in particular. It will not get occupy put into an office, but. It's a way of being able to tell the government, look, we would like these votes counted. We'd like to know just how many people there were that really did show up to say, I care, and I was there. I don't think that's asking too terribly much. And if the only thing that you're taking away in the process of doing that is a vote that would have went for the lesser evil, then you're not really hurting anything because if you're if you're failing to vote for evil you're actually doing a good thing and maybe we'll get better election results because of it so rather than joining the millions of people or hundreds of millions of people who vote for evil to keep evil out rather than voting for the demo publican tag team to keep out the demo publican tag team right in occupy on every position you can where you don't have someone you want specifically to put in.
please. Thank you.